Did you know the Colosseum was built by the forced labour of Jewish slaves? We go to Rome to learn about the hidden history of one of the world's most famous tourist attractions. This is Alien News. Every year, millions of tourists flock to Rome, eager to stand in awe of the many incredible architectural feats it has to offer. However, there was a great cost to the construction of such buildings. The enslaved Jewish workforce, decimation of Jewish culture, and plundering of Jerusalem. Gianluca shares more of this largely unknown story with us. As we take stock of our present day situation around the world and reading the times, here we are in Rome in some of the key historical places that you can see behind me that serves as a memorial of the plight of the ancient uh, Jewish people around the world. Now here we are near the most ancient amphitheater ever built, the Colosseum. As you can catch a glimpse, it rises four stories into the sky with 80 entrances. It used to hold more than 50,000 spectators who flocked to this landmark to watch games during the eighth of the Roman Empire. But few are the guidebooks that ever mention why the Colosseum was built. Let me explain it to you. In 70 AD, Roman Emperor Titus conquered Jerusalem. His troops set fire to the temple and he ordered the destruction of the entire city. Nothing was to remain. Titus' troops plundered the many priceless gold and silver vessels and decorations of the temple, taking them as spoils of war. Afterwards, he returned home to Rome with about 50,000 Jewish captives as slaves. So, the Colosseum was funded by loot stolen from the ancient Jewish temple. Now, you've got to realize that this was a place built by Jewish slaves to entertain the masses. It was a place of spectacle, of gladiatorial fighting, and of trials by the beasts. This is where the term arena comes from, and it was built by enslaved Jews from Judea. Behind me, you can see the Arch of Titus, which is famous for depicting Roman soldiers carrying the spoils of the siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD, among which the Golden Menorah. The highlight of every Roman military victory was the vast triumphal procession back home in Rome afterwards. These parades were a centerpiece of Roman imperial identity. Some processes took several days to display all the looted materials, wealth, and slaves taken from faraway lands. It seems that Titus' procession celebrating his victory over Jerusalem was one of the more dazzling spectacles the city had ever seen. It was so memorable that Titus commissioned a massive triumphal arch erected in the Forum, the heart of ancient Brown, decorated with carvings, illustrating his victory parade, complete with Jewish slaves, captives, and looted goods, including the temple's golden menorah. The arch reminded Romans of their empire's triumph in the Jewish war, and has stood for nearly 2,000 years, dazzling visitors to this day. So here we are in the most visited place of the world, the Roman Forum and it reflects, as you can see, the atrocities that uh, the Romans did once. You know, these ancient ruins that you can see in here, the atrocities that the Romans did against the Jewish people. But today, Ebenezer Operation Exodus, not only in Italy, but worldwide, has chosen to act differently because we want to reverse history. We want to reverse the wrongs of the past by showing compassion and love towards them. The Hebrew prophet Isaiah speaks of the day when the old waste places and ancient ruins shall be built again. These are the days of restoration, 
when on top of the ruins of affliction and suffering of the Jews, Christian believers are being called by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob with a special mandate for the restoration of the Jewish people to their own land. Ebenezer Operation Exodus is helping to facilitate this by encouraging the Christians to understand their role in helping the Jewish people to make Aliyah, so repairing the breach, by allowing them to dwell in the streets and cities of their promised land of Israel. Today, after more than 2,000 years, we believe it's time for believers worldwide to understand and to favor Zion. Let us therefore play our part in this end-time Aliyah from the four corners of the earth. A group of over 100 Ebenezer supporters in Italy recently gathered together to hear updates from Israel and pray for the Jewish people. So we are here in Rome. We just had our Ebenezer conference for Italy, but mainly with participants from Rome. And we were praying for the Aliyah. It was a wonderful time of worship with also Jewish guests and with uh, people who really want to pray for the Aliyah and bless the Jewish community, help them in this difficult time and also we prayed for Israel. Following the siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD, the Romans left the city in ruins. For generations, the land was laid waste, widely uninhabitable. As the Jewish people began returning to the Promised Land in the 20th century, they found it much the same, filled with malarial swamps and infertile soil. Now, the nation of Israel stands as an agricultural pioneer in the Middle East. The prophet Ezekiel foresaw this correlation between the alia of the Jewish people and the cultivation of the land. For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will resettle your towns and your ruins will be rebuilt. The desolate land will be cultivated instead of lying desolate in the sight of all who pass through it. I, the Lord, have spoken and I will do it. Our teams in Italy and all around the world will continue to support this great vision of restoration, longing to bring glory to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Like the we invite you to join us this November as we gather for our international conference in Jerusalem. To book your place, visit our website ebenezer-oe.org forward slash events. Like